Hello, and welcome to the Indie Author Podcast. Today, I have two guests, and my first guest is Rob Archangel. Hey, Rob, how are you doing? I am doing well, Maddie. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. It is great to have you here. To give our listeners a little bit of background on you, Rob Archangel is the owner of Archangel Inc., and author of The Published Professional, How Self-Publishing Can Help You Build Your Brand, Attract More Clients, and Increase Sales. Rob founded Archangel Inc. to help clients more effectively reach their audience, share their message, and build their brand. Rob and his team help busy authors, entrepreneurs, and business professionals self-publish their work with quality and ease so they can focus on their area of expertise. And I wanted to thank Dale L. Roberts for the introduction. Dale's like the matchmaker of the indie publishing community, and I met Rob through a forum that Dale hosts. So the topic that we're going to be talking about today is ghostwriting, and we're actually going to be hearing from two perspectives. I think this is my first two guest episode, but Rob is going to be talking about hiring a ghostwriter. And then we're going to be hearing from one of Archangel Inc.'s ghostwriters, Michael Kiefer, and he's going to be discussing being a ghostwriter. So I think this will be great. People will get a a wide ranging perspective on this topic of ghostwriting by the time we're done. So Rob, I wanted to start out asking you how ghostwriting became a service that Archangel Inc. decided to offer. It really came out of a need. We had a client several years ago. We've been in business about eight years and I would say five or six, maybe even seven years ago, we had someone say, Hey, I've got an idea. I don't really have it fully fleshed out. I'm an okay writer, not a great writer. Is there any way that you can help me? Is that something that you offer? And, um, We were working with another editor at the time who did that sort of service and uh, reached out and said, hey, have you done something like this before? Is this something that you're interested in doing? At the time, we actually had, I would say, two different levels of ghostwriting. These days, we focus on the research-focused and intensive uh, version. But the two that that I was made uh, aware of initially was one, a basic research-based ghostwriting project, and then a, a full kind of custom writing project that's really designed for thought leaders, people who have particular insight and uh, expertise in an area, and they really want to bring it to life. The former that we had learned about was writing for trends. So for example, somebody says, hey, intermittent fasting is really interesting. It's really hot. People are, are interested in knowing about this. I'd like to put out something to speak to maybe my audience or start to build an audience, but I, I don't really have the time or energy or wherewithal to do it. That was designed to be much more uh, efficient, cost-effective, and you, know, you have a particular topic and maybe a handful of resources that you say, hey, these are the resources that I want you to uh, pull from and, and learn from and then put this book together. Usually one or two drafts, pretty quick. You can obviously go through additional rounds of editing after that, but it's not highly tailored. It's not highly customized in the way that the, the custom writing projects that we tend to focus on these days are. It was really quick and dirty. Hey, let's research something. Let's put something together and and see if it flies a kind of idea. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit of a, a meandering answer, but hopefully that kind of um, speaks to how we we got involved with it. The, the, uh, the editor that we were working with offered both of those kinds of services. And so we realized, okay, there's an interest. There's a desire for this. There are people who are in need of this. Let's see what we can do to provide for those people. When you're doing the research type of ghostwriting, how much of the research is done with a client and how much of the research is done just on reputable sources that you find in other places? Yeah. The way that we worked for those projects was the author would, the client would uh, let us know the sources that they wanted us to base our research around. They might say, here's five other books on intermittent fasting and two other books on metabolism. And then also, I don't like this perspective, avoid work coming from such and such uh, sources. And then the the writer would kind of take it and run from there. And it was almost a way for the writer to flex their creative muscles and to be assigned a, a research project, a longer length research project, not just a 15 pager for your college intro class or something, but a full length research project and say, hey, put something together. Let's see what you come up with. And then it can be revised and, and workshopped afterward. But it was very uh, writer driven um, rather than client driven. Do you ever have to vet your clients to make sure that you don't have someone who's hiring you to write an academic paper that they're then going to pass off as their own? Knock on wood, uh, we have not. We are very careful to vet our clients though these days, particularly because the custom writing projects that we really focus on, the custom ghostwriting, are really thought leader level material. And um, there's a lot of close interaction that happens. And we're working with somebody in many cases for six months, 12 months, even longer. And the vetting process that we have, we want to make sure that they understand really well what we can offer, what the scope of our uh, service is, and that they have very clear expectations. And we have very clear expectations from them as well that we know 
what it is that they're hoping to accomplish from this book so that we can go in both parties, eyes wide open and make sure that it's going to be a good collaboration. You know, the dollar amount really doesn't matter if you have to spend months and months with uh, another person who you just don't jive with on a professional working relationship level. And so we're really careful about that. And maybe just because that's the way that we work, we knock on wood, haven't uh, been in a position where we're tasked with accidentally writing somebody's master's thesis. What are the different circumstances that you've encountered that lead people to be seeking a ghostwriter? A couple of different um, instances. The most common, I would say, is they have some area of expertise that they want to bring to the world. What Archangel Inc. tends to focus on are the published professionals, the the people who want to use their book to build their brand, to increase sales, and, and so forth. For example, we've worked with physicians before, with exercise coaches, with people in the health and nutrition arena, and their goal is they have something that they do that they're really good at, and they want to translate that into something digestible for the rest of the world. And our aim is to take what's in their head and convey it in a way that somebody just picking up a book and not necessarily walking into the office or being served on an individual client basis by that other person would still be able to get something out of it. So I would say that's the most common, but you did ask about the other type of writer who maybe they have a really good idea and they're okay as a writer, but they're not totally polished. They maybe need a lot of developmental work. And sometimes that deep developmental editing kind of crosses over into the ghostwriting arena. And we're not just taking their structure, but actually helping them craft the words and flesh things out in a coherent way. So I would say those are the two primary clientels that we have when it comes to ghostwriting. Someone who is working on a book, but really needs help in a deep, even in some cases, more than development basis. And then the folks who they have great ideas, they're not a skilled writer, or they just don't have the time. Maybe they're a physician, a busy professional. There's something that they're doing that's really taking up their their time and energy, and they need somebody to extract that information from them. And that's our goal. We try and make it as easy as possible through recorded interviews. We, we come up with an outline and they have a chance to review things kind of um, piece by piece so that they can say, yeah, this, this sounds like me. This is definitely the information that I have in my head. This is what I know. This is what my area of focus is. And ideally, this is exactly as I would say it, but I'm not the one that's actually having to put finger to keyboard. What kind of goals do customers or do clients or authors come to you with? Is it for like a book as a calling card? Is it for monetary benefit? What kind of goals are you seeing among your clients? So a couple of different goals. I would say in general, it is a calling card project. It's something that they want to expand the scope of their business. And they see a book as an opportunity to do that. And they have either self-awareness about their own writing limitations or their own time limitations or what have you to say, hey, I know a book is going to be really helpful, but I just, I'm not going to be able to do it myself. Let's outsource. Let's bring on some additional help, bring it into the world and, and then use that to grow the business. The other type of clientele Uh, which I would say is maybe 10 or 15% of of what we do. Those people who have an idea, but they really need that that almost blend between the developmental and ghostwriting editing work to to happen in order to uh, realize their vision. And in those cases, many times it's not financially based. It's not monetary based. They're not necessarily thinking about the ways that they're going to earn a positive return on, on that investment, but it's really about in some cases, investing in themselves, becoming a better writer through that ghostwriting developmental editing process and helping them maybe position themselves to do the next ver- the next in series as their own independent author. They're uh, using it as sort of um, education investment. Have you ever had the circumstance where someone has come to you thinking they need one service, but upon assessment, it becomes clear they need another? So I'm thinking of someone who has written something and thinks what they want is a developmental edit when what they really need is somebody to overhaul it to an extent that it would be more like a ghostwriting assignment. Yep. Yeah. And that's the most common and since most times when people come to us and we end up doing something that's closer to that ghostwriting developmental blend, in some cases they they think, okay, I just need a proof. I just need a proofwrite. And we, you know, we'll go through an assessment. It's like, well, we noticed some of these issues and based on our assessment, this is the scope of what we would recommend and would be looking at. So that does happen. And, and it's tricky. We do our best to be professional and, and forthright and transparent and, and work to the highest standards that we're capable of. But we're also one outfit. And we tell people, hey, we're not hard salespeople. If you think that our assessment is off, if we just don't see the potential that's there or we don't see the brilliance that's there, no hard feelings. If, if you want to go and get a second and third and fifth opinion from other providers, other editors, other potential ghostwriting collaborators to find out if it's a good fit. We're fortunate and um, blessed really to 
have clients that, that really want to work with us. And again, part of that is we focus on uh, quality rather than quantity and making sure that the fit as much as possible is really strong and really present so that both we as the provider and they as the client feel like this is going to be a fruitful time and that we can the next several months or potentially year plus that we're going to be working together. If someone is listening to this and they're recognizing their own need in one of these categories, a developmental edit slash ghostwriter, or they just don't have the time, what are some tips that you would offer as they look for and then assess ghostwriting services? How would they find the pool of candidates to begin with, I guess? One, I would say, do your research, figure out what parties are reputable. Archangel Link is fortunate to be a partner member of the Alliance of Independent Authors. I can speak from my personal experience that they have a very thorough vetting process when we were first applying. It's not just a matter of, okay, send us a PayPal payment and, and you're good and you're on our list. They actually have somebody review, ask questions about the scope of what we do, the, the character of what we do, the pricing that we have, and make sure that we're actually uh, acting with integrity. And uh, so an outside independent watchdog agency like Ally, I think is a good place to go to for finding reputable providers. Another good recommendation is if you have author friends, if you have people in author communities and ask for personal recommendations. In many cases, the recommendations that you receive uh, are not going to be affiliate you know, recommendations if you're asking on a Facebook group. They're not going to be financially motivated necessarily. And so there's a better likelihood that you'll have unbiased um, information. And particularly if you're writing in a certain type of genre and you're involved in reader groups or writer groups based on that, then you might be more likely to find editors or providers who specialize in that particular genre by speaking to other people in your cohort. So those would be some recommendations for finding and vetting the, the right sorts of parties. One thing I will mention as well, there may be good experiences and opportunities to find people on places like Fiverr and Upwork, but... Um, Unfortunately, we have encountered others, I'm thinking of one client in particular, who came to us after they had spent a relatively small amount of money on getting their project ghostwritten. We ran it through basic plagiarism software and said, hey, there's entire almost like half chapters that are pulled more or less directly from other sources. Like this is not going to pass muster. And out of our professional integrity, we want to let you know that we found this. We obviously can't tell you what to do or not do going forward, but but I want to bring this to your attention. And my experience with providers in general is in many cases, you get what you pay for. If you find a deal that sounds too good to be true, you know, somebody who's going to write your whole great American novel for 150 bucks and, and have it done for you in a week, probably not going to be the quality that you're hoping for, particularly for something like ghostwriting. It's a very time and labor intensive process and the price is fairly significant. Just be aware going into it that if you decide that this is a good fit for you, then you may want to prepare yourself for the investment that's involved and make sure that whoever you're working with is going to quality professional work and not just outsource it to somebody who is going to put it together and maybe pull paragraphs and, and chapters whole cloth from wherever else just to meet a deadline and, and make a couple of bucks. I really like the recommendation for Ally, the Alliance of Independent Authors, because that's one that I use. I've used them, for example, to vet potential guests for the podcast. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. somebody approaches me and I really don't know anything about them, I've gotten in touch with Ally. The other resource would be Writer Beware mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. affiliated with Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America, but that you can use yeah. even if you're not a member of that organization. And I'll put sure. a, a link to that resource as well in the show notes. Sure. Awesome. So you've mentioned the price a few times. Can you give any guidance to someone who might be looking for ghostwriting services about what they should consider? How can they assess whether a price they may be quoted is valid? Is it like plumbing where you get three quotes and then you pick the middle one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think it depends. For us, I would say that we're probably right in line with what high-level ghostwriters will provide. One of the similar services that existed shortly after Archangel Inc. was formed was Book in a Box. Now they're scribed media and their ghostwriting projects start at a, a six-figure investment. And I think it's $120,000, you know, plus. Uh, and they're very explicit about the sort of clientele that they're looking for, you know, people who are in many cases CEOs or, or business owners and, and professionals and so forth. And they really want everything done for them. Archangel Inc. It operates on a, a similar sort of basis, not quite at that same uh, dollar figure. I, I do think it's probably worthwhile to look around, to do your research, check on Ally, see what providers offer ghostwriting services. And even if just for yourself, make up a spreadsheet and, and see, okay, this it's going to start out at X number of dollars and go up to Y number of dollars. And, and then that gives you at least some grounding when you're talking with and interviewing your, your candidates. And for us, we're very careful about vetting because we want to make sure that the, the fit is really strong. And I think that should be important for you as a client as well. I wouldn't necessarily go with the least expensive 
offensive without respect to the, the feel, the vibe that you get and, and the level of shared values and ease of communication and all of that. And it's okay and totally appropriate to ask for some time. Obviously, each provider has different things, different introductions that they offer. We offer a free introductory call and we make ourselves available via email. And in some cases, especially for a bigger project, if we have to get on a, a subsequent call after that, just to go over things, make sure everybody feels really good about it. We're happy to do that. And there may be other providers as well. I would just encourage folks to make sure that the fit is really strong in Archangel Inc.'s own business dealings. I've I found that, what's the expression? Buy once, cry once. Don't go for the cheapest option and then cause yourself stress and hardship down the line. Sometimes it makes sense to invest in that quality. Okay, yeah, it's going to um, be an investment and it's going to be something that hurts a little bit. Maybe if you didn't have the, the expectation of paying whatever amount, but if the experience and, and the final product ends up um, being a lot stronger than it would otherwise, in, in many cases, that's the route to go. At least that's our professional experience and my recommendation as well. Just make sure that you're satisfied with what you're hearing and on the same page because you're going to be working with your ghostwriter for a really long time, potentially. Make sure that you're not going in with reservations and off feelings about it. What is the scope of or the, the variability of time that an engagement can last? It, it depends. I would say that for us, our ghostwriting process, we budget about a year. In some cases, it, it will finish in eight to 10 months or so. But for the writing portion, depending on the availability of the author, as well as the writer that we're working with, the, the writing process might take four to six months. And the way that we do it, we have recorded uh, interviews. We'll come up with kind of our introductory call, develop a, a general outline, a general scope, and then we'll have these recorded interviews, we'll transcribe them, and then work on translating that information into a chapter that reads well, that sounds like it's in the author's voice, that actually conveys what we're hoping to accomplish with that chapter, and then we'll send it back to them for review. And they say, okay, this sounds great, this is exactly me, or hold on, they're over on page 15, we were talking about such and such, that wasn't exactly what I meant, and, and we'll workshop it, because we want to make sure as much as possible as we get to chapter two and three and four and, and 10 and 20 and the end of the book, that we're not having to go back and retrace things from the beginning. If we write the whole book from scratch, we have one interview, and a month later, the whole book is done, it can be really hard to backtrack and, and correct any of the issues that are there. If we're going chapter by chapter, the scale is a lot more manageable. It's bite-sized. And it also is really helpful for the writer to get a sense of, oh, okay, I know this particular perspective or this turn of phrase or um, this style of delivery that the author, that the client is looking for. And I can incorporate that going forward rather than proceeding along with, uh, with a type one error from the beginning, going all the way to the end, and then having to deal with it a hundred times rather than a couple of times in the first few chapters. Yeah. It's reminding me of the experience I just had with the audiobook of one of my novels. And fortunately, one of the very early chapters had almost all the characters in it talking on a Zoom call, in fact. And it was great because the audiobook narrator could just do that one chapter and then send it to me and say, okay, here's pretty much everybody. Let me know if you want any changes and similar kind right. of thing. If you start right. with a sample that's going to represent the different types of things that are included in the project, that's probably a good way to start out. Mm -hmm. That writing process will happen. And then we'll actually go through for Archangel Inc. the rest of the scope of service. So we'll have another editor working on it, doing the line editing, doing the copy editing, in some cases, maybe in even a uh, party doing the proofreading at the end, because we want to make sure that everything is really tight and crisp. And in that first stage, when we're right, focusing on the writing, obviously we want it to be good. We want it to sound like you. We want to get the, the outline of what's there onto the page. But we're not worried about crossing all of our T's and dotting our I's. We liken it to building a house. We want that foundation. We want the walls to be there. We want the roof to be there. We want it all to be sound. We're not necessarily thinking at that stage about the interior design and what paintings we're going to put on the wall once everything is painted and, and taken care of. All of that happens in sequence. And there may be other processes out there. I can just speak to our own. But because of that, and because of that emphasis on the, the detail and quality that we really try to aspire toward, it's going to take, in many cases, eight months to a year, I think that's a reasonable turnaround to, to anticipate. I would think that a possible red flag for avoiding the bad players would be if somebody wants the whole payment up front or a big payment up front, as opposed to we're going to do the research portion, we're going to do the outlining portion, whatever, and there are going to be milestones along the way and you'll make a payment as you reach those milestones. Is that true in the ghostwriting world? I think that's pretty typical. For us, we do have a payment plan set up for almost all of our projects. And so we'll stagger it out. One thing I will say from the provider standpoint is sometimes there are delays that don't have to um, 
do with us. So there could be the client gets busy at work and all of a sudden they drop off the map for three months. You know, we still have our process going. Everything is moving forward and we're careful about our service agreement and how we word it and late payments and anything like that. But yeah, I do think it's reasonable to have different benchmarks, to have milestones, to have payment plans in place. I don't think it would be fair or reasonable, for example, with Scribe Media to say, okay, cut us a check for 120 grand and we promise we'll get to your book at some point. I think that would alarm most people and for due cause. So have transparency, discuss that with your provider. If you do end up going the ghostwriting route, try and understand that. For us, we have our structure in place and we're happy to answer questions. And in some cases, if we need to make some alternate arrangements or they say, hey, I'm concerned about A, B, and C, can we consider something else? We're always happy to to discuss that and, and figure out if we can come up with a workable solution. And we're also happy to say, hey, this is just kind of what we need. These are our terms. If this doesn't work for you, that's fine. No hard feelings. We're not hard salespeople and we have our integrity to back us up, but I recognize that people have different needs as well. And we're happy to figure out if we can come to a good place together. The last question I wanted to ask you is one I'm also going to ask Michael. So I want to get both the perspective from the person who's managing these engagements and the perspective of the person who's executing the engagement. And that is what tips Do you have for people who are engaging a ghostwriter to make the experience as optimal as possible for both parties? Yep. So the first thing, most important thing I would say is figure out what your goal is with your book. What are you trying to accomplish? If you go in with a North Star, with a guiding light, a sense of, hey, Hey, I I have Y revenue in sales every year. I own this business. I'd like to get to Z revenue in sales. And this book is my avenue to do that. Uh, It makes it a lot easier to assess after the fact, whether you've accomplished your goal. And also during the process, whether you're working toward that goal, continually reach back and figure out, is this helping me? to accomplish my my one big goal or my two big goals, then that makes the writing experience easier, the editing process easier, the motivation portion easier because you've identified what it is that you're trying to do. And so when it feels like drudgery and, and you just don't want to go and review the next chapter and you're like, wait, okay, I remember I invested in this because I had this vision, this something, then it's easier to do that. But the second thing I would say, Uh, Again, going back to the early stages, vet your provider. Make sure it feels like a good fit. If you have a good, uh, free-flowing, easy conversation from the outset and and the person is vibing with you, they understand what you're getting at. Maybe they're not an expert in your subject matter. In most cases, they're they're probably not. But if they are asking intelligent questions, if they're able to follow up with good responses and imagine different scenarios that can help uh, put you at ease, that's really helpful. Make sure that your working relationship is going to be something that you feel good about. And again, you don't necessarily have to be best friends with your writer. Obviously, we love forming relationships. That's a big part of of why we do what we do at Archangel Inc. anyway. We don't all have to be super chummy, but we have to have a good professional working relationship and be able to say, okay, I I pick up what you're throwing down. You know, I grok, let's (laughs) move forward. And so if you can get those couple of things in place, as well as the logistical issues of budget, timing, the scope of service, what your expectations are as the client, what their expectations are as the provider, what you do in different scenarios. If a particular um, benchmark isn't met, whether on your end or their end, don't get clear about all of that, those technical issues, then I think the, the stage is set for success. If you ignore that, if you go in blindly, if you think, well, this person seems okay, I'll, let's just do it. Or they're the cheapest one, let's just do it. The likelihood that you're going to run into something that throws you for a loop, I think increases. Great. Well, Rob, thank you so much. I appreciate you sharing that perspective from the managing of the engagement perspective. Please let the listeners know where they can go to find out more about you and Archangel Inc. services online. Yeah, absolutely. So archangelinc.com, that's Archangel I-N-K, like pen and inkwell, not incorporated. And you can find all of our social media on there. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We have a YouTube channel and you can find all of that on our website, but our website is the best way to reach us. We do offer uh, free initial consultations. If you think you might want to work with us on ghostwriting or anything else, or uh, if you just have some questions, you know, hey, I'm not really interested in working with a provider at this time, but I've read some of your free resources, which again are on our website. And I just had a couple of questions. Would you mind getting on the phone for, for 20 minutes and chatting with me and maybe pointing me in some helpful directions. Uh, We're happy to do that too. That's the hub. That's the way to reach out to us. And uh, if there's anything we can do to help any of your listeners and viewers out there, we're very happy to. Excellent. And uh, listeners, please stay tuned because right after this, you're going to be hearing from Michael Kiefer discussing being a ghostwriter. So Rob, thank you again. Yes, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Maddie.